I got the new iMac and MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch a little early from Apple. And I do have some initial thoughts, but before we get to all of that, let's talk about what we get in the box for each. So we're gonna start with the iMac because it has new colors and I want to place it on the Husky in my office. Cause right now I'm really planning to use it to help with filming and research when I'm over in that area. But the packaging, where do you are? <laughs> In the box for the new MacBook Pros, it's even more basic. There's your power brick. The polishing cloth. Did I overlook that? So this polishing cloth here was in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is in there either because it's a 16 inch or because of the type of M4 chip it is. Whichever the case is, I'm gonna throw it up here. But uh, yeah. Now color wise for the MacBook Pros, they're offered in space black and silver, but the iMacs, they have that beautiful color palette with six new options to choose from. I could only imagine something like this for the MacBook Pros. Like this is some feedback, I think, across the board for the pro line of things. We need colors, you know, like for the pro models with phones, for the pro models with iPads, down to the pro models with the MacBook. Hashtag team colors down below for those that agree. With the iMacs, I just really like how thin the design is overall. The new iMac is basically the same design as before, but is different in the color and power here. So this one packs the new M4 chip, which is significantly faster than the previous M1 IMAX. And port-wise, there are now four Thunderbolt 4 ports. But I do love the braided cable with the magnetic attachment and just the overall color flow of things throughout. Now, similar to the IMAX, the new MacBook Pros also have the same design for the most part. Same size, same storage options, and speakers. But what I really want to do with y'all is explore a few things. I want to talk about what's new with these computers, how Sequoia, because this is my first time using it, y'all. When it comes to updating the software, I am like one of the last to do it. And it's really just because I want to make sure all of my existing applications work on the new software. So we're going to be taking a look at that. And I also want to chat about who should upgrade into what. Let's start with the new M4 MacBook Pros. So like we stated, these have the new M4 chip just as the new iMac. Of course, they're going to be faster than the previous MacBook Pros, 1.8 times faster than the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro when it comes to editing huge photos and things similar to that. And it's also 3.4 times faster than the M1 for AI related tasks like Apple Intelligence. But that's one thing to know. All of these computers can run Apple Intelligence. All of them also have a 12 megapixel center stage camera, which is something new across the board. But the one key change with the new MacBook Pros is that the base model now has three Thunderbolt ports. In the past, it only offered two. The battery is also slightly better on the base model and so is the screen brightness. But with that screen brightness, this is going to be something that's more noticeable when, you know, using this out in direct sunlight. But something new with the screen is that we now have a nano texture option. Something like this makes it a lot easier. It can be a challenge during, you know, the sunnier days. But for reference, like if you've ever seen the nano texture display on iPads, that will give you a good idea of what to expect here. But let's let's talk about Sequoia. Now who should upgrade? <laughs> I feel M1 users and those with computers before that and are seeking to upgrade are best suited for these. They will notice the most difference. M2 users and especially M3 users, I feel like y'all are just fine. Even more so to me for M3 users. However, that nano texture display alone might be enough to upgrade. But one thing I will say is with computers and especially Macs, Upgrades are needed much less in my opinion, even more less than how often somebody probably would upgrade the phone. My Mac computers, they have lasted for years. And when it comes to, you know, Apple intelligence, it will work on all of these models, all the way down to the M1. All in all, there are improvements with the new Macs, but I feel more changes could have made it even more of an option for M2 users and up. 
These are available for pre-order now and they're in store November 8th. The MacBook Pros, they're gonna start at $15.99 for the base model 14 inch and $4.99 for the base model 16 inch. I forgot y'all, I don't think we talked about this, but there are three different M4 chips that you can choose from. Each of them are gonna be offered for the 14 inch and the 16 inch. Now me personally, I like to max out the smaller size because I like something light portable and powerful when I'm out on the go. A 16 inch screen is just gonna be too large and I'm gonna be less inclined to wanna take it with me. But that's the main difference between the top of the line 14 versus the top of the line 16 inch. That's the screen size and the battery life as well because you get two more hours on the 16 inch option versus the 14. But outside of that, they're pretty much the same. Same speakers, camera, memory, storage, even the ports. You don't have to sacrifice power here for a smaller setup and I love that. Cause sometimes you do. I know before this, I would take my N3 MacBook Pro with me when I would go out and just dock it when I'm at home. So I don't really care about having a larger screen size like that. The M3 MacBook Pro is pretty much the computer prior to this that I have ran my entire business on. But I'm gonna keep using the new Macs and update you on my thoughts over time. So feel free to drop any questions you have and also feel free to follow me on IG and TikTok to stay further connected. But until the next one, y'all, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.